Chairman and members of the board, the uh, audience behind me and the public uh, viewing us, welcome to our afternoon session of the board. As we uh, start as a tradition for every meeting, it's recognizing the value of our employees and the excellence that they provide every day. Uh, we're in a unique position today because the first presentation after Everyday Excellence is our police departmental update. So it's fitting actually that they're one and the same today. Uh, so Colonel Katz, I, I like to call him forward to begin his presentation and as part of his presentation, there's a lot of uh, recognition to be had and, and earned amongst his uh, people and personnel. So uh, we will start with his presentation. And there's a couple of other niceties of some other police activities, especially our relationship with Virginia State University and some recognition we recently received that I'll be talking about later today under my county administrator update. Colonel Katz. Colonel, welcome. Welcome, Mr. Chair, distinguished board, Dr. Casey, fellow citizens. Uh, it's my uh, privilege and honor today to recognize uh, two of some of our, our best personnel, uh, Master Officer Rob Wilson and Senior Detective Chris Lee. If I could ask them to, uh, to join me, because I'm not going to say nice things about them while they're sitting behind me. I want them up front so that they can have the, uh, the attention they deserve, and they, I'm sure they don't want. <laughs> So first, uh, I'd like to introduce Officer of the Year, uh, Master Officer Rob Wilson. Um, Master Officer Wilson has an incredible work ethic and is driven to be outstanding in all facets of his job. He's led the Chesterfield County Police Department in total traffic stops and arrests for the last four years. And when I give the update, you'll understand why that is so important. Officer Wilson also volunteers for the Gracie program that partners with VCU Health. And Gracie is the Get Real Alcohol Drug Choices and Consequences for You program. This partnership takes young adults who have been charged with certain driving offenses and puts them through a scared straight style program. In December of 2020, Officer Wilson had the idea to honor the memory of victims of crashes that have occurred in Chesterfield County. Officer Wilson presented the idea via his chain of command and began coordinating with various parties that have a vested interest to determine the design, the cost, location, and much more. Officer Wilson's idea, uh, after months of planning, turned into a ma major traffic safety campaign uh, that was called In Memory Of, and we'll cover that in the update. But it was a valuable um, public safety and traffic safety message for education in our community, and also it honored the memory of people who have tragically lost their lives on our roadways. After several months, of work. Uh, the campaign was launched and at the end of March of 2021 resulted in several local news stories as well as a tremendous feedback on social media. His dedication and to the preservation of life, protection of the vulnerable, development of personnel, and the building of problem-solving partnerships, which is the core of his work ethic. Uh, his nomination for Officer of the Year uh, was described as being, he was described as being the best of the best. His unparalleled work ethic, commitment to his community, and passion for public safety keep Chesterfield County a first choice community. I should also say that he hails from our beloved Sheriff uh, Carl Leonard, uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, so, uh, Officer Wilson, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Also standing beside me is Senior Detective Chris Lee. Uh, Senior Detective Christopher Lee was transferred to the Special Victim Section of the Criminal Investigations Division in the fall of 2018. As you've known from previous presentations I've given the board and, and discussions I've had with you, the Special Victim Section is of particular uh, value and interest to me. Um, and in the three years that he has emerged, he's not only been one of the most skilled and capable investigators in the Persons Unit, but it, also an informal leader of the Special Victim Section. Detective Lee is incredibly thorough, diligent, and resourceful. He's team-oriented, he's an effective communicator, he's the epitome of professionalism and possesses a remarkably dogged work ethic. All these qualities are ever-present in his impeccable casework. As, a, as a, a detective, it's very easy and frankly understandable to become fixated on individual pursuits and his own personal performance. But what makes Detective Lee an ideal representative of the Investigations Bureau is that he has shown time and time again that he doesn't view himself as merely a detective only concerned with investigating his endeavors, but as a member of the police department who will do whatever it takes to help other department members fulfill their mission. 
Chris is also a member of our AUS, or Unmanned Aerial Systems, Aircraft Systems team, and uh, he's uh, training this evening, which is uh, why it's so remarkable that he's actually joined us today and in a suit because he was supposed to be in training gear. So I don't know how he got out of that, but <laughs> I'm sure you'll be having a discussion with uh, Blaine Davis. <laughs> yes. So, Chris, congratulations. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to take a moment to recognize all of uh, the teammates of these officers uh, who have taken the time to come in the back of the room and support uh, these individuals. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Gentlemen, do you have anything you'd like to share? No, Colonel. Yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you Colonel. Yeah. So the next item uh, I have to share with you is, uh, is our update from uh, 2021. As you know, every year I uh, try to have the opportunity to come before the board and just share a little bit with you uh, some highlights of what we've done as an agency, as a department. Um, there's a lot to be said, um, but I understand that I am the thing that is keeping you between uh, this and dinner. Uh, I've been in that position as an instructor before, so I'm going to try to get through this fairly quickly, but uh, really everything I share here and more will be encapsulated in our annual report, which will be published uh, probably next week, all right? So uh, as you've heard me talk about before, and I won't belabor the point, we exist for four reasons. I've actually touched on it in this uh, everyday excellence. Um, we exist to preserve human life, to protect the vulnerable, to establish problem-solving partnerships, and to uh, procure, develop, train, and retain top-tier talent. Uh, everything we do in our organization is geared toward those endeavors. Uh, one of the things that we did this last year as an executive staff, uh, as we sat down and answered some fundamental questions that we believe that every organization should answer in its leadership team so that everybody in the organization is on the same page. Those questions are, again, why do we exist? How do we behave? What do we do? How will we succeed? What is most important right now? And who must do what? Um, we believe that if you, uh, if you answer those questions and everyone in the organization learns those answers, that we can all operate off the same sheet of music. So um, you know, how do we behave? Ethical, purposeful, intentional, and customer-centric. Um, what do we do? We serve, protect, and lead. We will succeed together. I think that's important. Uh, what's most important right now are SMART goals. As you know, we quantitate our goals every, every year to, to make sure that we're, uh, we're actually hitting measurable goals. And who must do, do what? Uh, we must be dependable and we must depend on one another. These are all things that are essential to who we are as an organization and how we perform. Next slide. Uh, one of the things that I think differentiates our organization from many others is our culture and the culture we continue to work and build every single day. And one of the things that we've done in the last couple of years is we've built, uh, uh, we've asked people, what is it like to work in the department? And we've, we've captured some of those statements, uh, included them in our annual report. And some of the things that, we, that we've heard our, our staff say is that the culture is undoubtedly different compared to uh, this, this one officer's time in the military, uh, consistently being praised for hard work, uh, and they've never experienced that before, which is really good. Uh, I'd like to second that one, uh, Chief, uh, having, been, having served in the military. I know Mr. Holland is, too. You know, you have some commanding officers sometimes who, who do praise you, but uh, it's few and far between, isn't it, Jim? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another uh, member of the department said they noticed that CCPD supports not just the sworn, but the civilians as well, which is very appealing, uh, and it's not visible with other agencies. Not, not always visible. Uh, our work culture is one that they've never experienced before in any other job. The department is one of the most inspiring and engaging work, work environments. Uh, CCPD leadership not only motivates employees towards success, but also holds their members accountable to the highest standards of excellence. I mean, the, the comments go on and on. Uh, again, this will be uh, articulated in our, in our annual report, but I just wanted to highlight uh, some of the key statements that some of our staff has made about the culture that we work together every day to build. Next slide, please. So uh, some of our successes for this year, and I'll spend the majority of the time on this particular slide. Uh, again, we talked about the In Memory Of campaign that Officer Wilson was responsible for creating uh, and innovating. And one of the unique features of our organizational culture is that everyone in the organization has 
a unique value and purpose. And so anybody who has an idea, uh, if it's a good idea and it falls within our parameters of existing, uh, we run with it, we go with it. So everybody is empowered and enabled to make a difference. And this is an example, I think, of, of honoring some, some folks who have died on our roadways tragically, uh, educating the public and reminding them to slow down, put on their seatbelt, uh, not, not use impairing substances, et cetera. In April, uh, we transitioned to our three division deployment system. I'm happy to share with you that our Falling Creek Division, which uh, border, borders Richmond and is our uh, busiest area of the, of the uh, county, actually experienced a 10% increase in response time uh, last year. So we're getting to where we need to get faster. Um, and so, and that, a lot of that has to do with our, our, our modified schedule uh, that we're, we're piloting in the Falling Creek Division. Uh, we uh, transitioned to Premier One uh, CAD and mobile system in May. Uh, we became the first agency in Virginia to implement uh, the spider tech system. I've talked about that in the past. It's essentially a customer satisfaction survey. I'll share with you some of the results uh, in future slides. We ranked sixth in the overall national night out engagement for communities, 300,000 or uh, more, and that's, uh, we're consistently in the top 10 in that particular area, so we're very proud of that. Uh, we invol invited volunteers uh, to join in our hiring process, both sitting on oral review panels, uh, evaluating potential candidates, and evaluating background investigations. Uh, simply asking members of the community, do you feel comfortable with this person patrolling your streets? We feel like there's an opportunity there to partner with the community. We've done that, and, uh, and it's been a very successful program and a, and a good partnership. Uh, we developed uh, a new civilian audits and inspections position in OPS. We repurposed a position in records. Uh, one of the features, I think, of, a, of an excellent organization is that we're continually measuring our performance. Uh, this person, Eric, uh, he has complete autonomy and latitude to go wherever he wants in the organization, look at whatever he wants, inspect it, uh, evaluate it. He's not a sworn police officer, uh, but he's our eyes and ears. And organizations do best that which they frequently measure. And we don't know what we're going to be measuring. So uh, excellence is our benchmark. Um, we made international news with our Smart Water CSI program uh, for uh, apprehending someone in the, uh, uh, that was breaking into the Ettrick Deli that was being hit uh, on numerous occasions. Um, we were very upset about that because it's a beloved business in our community. And uh, we were really, really excited uh, when we were able to snatch this gentleman uh, who may or may not be wearing a Ben Roethlisberger jersey in his, shirt, in his uh, picture. Uh, but we were very excited about the fact that, uh, that we were able to cap capture him. Uh, we also arrested more than 40 suspects during an online chatting or during online chatting operations this year. People that felt that they were going to come to Chesterfield County to exploit uh, underage youth um, and uh, violate them sexually. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in one of those things on the arrest team uh, back in November, and I can tell you that it is very satisfying to open the door of a hotel room and snatch up somebody who thought they were going to lay their hands on somebody's little girl. Um, and uh, we are committed to continue doing that. Um, we uh, Obviously, we uh, enjoyed the long-anticipated public safety pay plan uh, as a result of the support from this board, and I appreciate that. Uh, it, is, it has helped do wonders for our retention, our, our hiring, uh, and that, that personnel piece of why we exist as an organization. So thank you for that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, just a couple of highlights. These are a lot of numbers, and I'm not going to anywhere, go anywhere near uh, covering them. But I do want to highlight, again, to Rob Wilson's contribution and our general contribution in terms of traffic safety. As you know, we have over 8,000 miles of roadways in Chesterfield County. Uh, we had a 28% decrease in traffic fatalities last year. We had an 8% increase in DUI arrests and DUID arrests. Um, and that was actually, that was 1,196 DUI and DUI uh, D arrests last year, which is really a remarkable number. Um, our overdose deaths remained steady over 2020 and 2021, and the national average increased from 78,000 to over 100,000, which is the most number of people who have died of drug overdoses since recorded history in this country. So um, we're doing a lot with traffic safety. We're doing a lot of, with narcotics. We're doing a lot with uh, uh, attacking the issue of uh, sexual predators and people trying to violate 
our, our juveniles. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of customer satisfaction, based on our spider tech data, we have achieved a satisfaction rating of 93% on average in 2021. Uh, that's a pretty remarkable number, considering the fact that nobody calls us when things are going well in their lives. Uh, when we leave, 93% of the community is satisfied with the work that we're performing. Um, so we're really happy with that. Uh, we don't rest on that, Laurel. We're going to try to get that number up even higher. But uh, we're pleased to have some sort of way of quantitating satisfaction in our community. And one of the other things that we're doing that's very unique to this program is we, we take the data that we get from spider tech we actually map it out in a heat map. And we look to see where trust is high or satisfaction is high, where it is low and where it can use improvement. And then we can, just like we do with, with de deploying people based on crime rates, we can de deploy our community policing uh, and community engagement units to those locations where satisfaction isn't as high as we'd like and try to build relationships. Uh, I think that's key and that's important. So moving on to the next one. Overall, we experienced a 10.8% reduction in crime, where we saw an increase uh, was with uh, weapons violations, with auto thefts, and with uh, sexual batteries. Um, those are the, the three areas where we saw increases. Everywhere else, we saw decreases, uh, particularly with property crime. We are seeing an increase in gang activity uh, out of the city. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of our violent crime victims are our young uh, folks, and, um, and it's really wasteful. But that's where we're seeing a lot of our weapon violations, and we're seeing a lot of our, our robberies and our homicides as well. Next slide, please. I've touched on this before, uh, and I think it merits bringing up again. Uh, our use of force incidents fell 41% uh, since 2017, uh, where we had 593. We have 349. This not, despite the fact that we've we uh, are dealing with a public that is less cooperative than they were in 2017. Uh, and that's evidenced by assaults on police officers rising uh, 98% uh, from 94 incidents in 2017 to 187 incidents in 2021. So clearly, um, you know, the, the, the public that we're uh, policing uh, is not necessarily as hospitable as they, they once were in 2017, or at least some of the bad actors. And police pursuits rose 77%. We had 74 in 2017, and we had 131 in 2021. So uh, uses of force are down, assaults and pursuits are up. Chief, uh, th that, that assault on police officers is really a, <clears throat> a remarkable statistic, and I just you know, figured I'd spend a moment on that because I'm, I'm kind of alarmed uh, that that would be up 98%. Um, you know, back when I did criminal defense, I could tell you that the judges um, seemed to have a certain ear out for those types of charges, and it did not go well at any point in time for any of um, uh, the defendants that I was representing uh, when that charge came up. So um, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit alarmed on that, and um, uh, do you see that um, across the country as well, that that's happening across the country, and where do we stack up uh, uh, on those numbers across the country? We certainly do. We see assaults on law enforcement officers, uh, ambush homicides on law enforcement officers increase uh, throughout the entire country. Uh, we've seen, frankly, we've seen homicide numbers across the country, uh, record homicide numbers. And in the region, homicides are up exponentially. Uh, ours happened to be down last year, um, but regionally, uh, homicides are up and, and nationally homicides are up. So uh, the public, the general public is more violent uh, and, um, and more inclined to, uh, to homicide and, and assaults on officers. Chair. Ms. Haley. Mr. Chair, um, and also, do we see a correlation between the pursuits and the assaults? So the fact that, for instance, folks are not being respectful of a, a stop then also evidences itself in combative responses? I mean, is there a, even if the correlation is in per incident, I guess, is it the tone of, again, the respect for law enforcement and? Well, what we've seen is, well, actually, we've seen public trust in law enforcement increase over the last couple of years, uh, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, but what we've also seen is that the, um, you know, bad actors in the, in the community who feel as though they, they are in a position to challenge 
uh, law enforcement authority and, and put us in a bad light when we exercise that authority, uh, we are seeing people uh, act out more boldly. Uh, that's making our jobs more dangerous, uh, but our folks are handling themselves quite well, and I'm very proud of them. And, and that's why, one of the reasons I want to bring this up, because you know, every time you have an incident where there's a, a, a controversial use of force or, or you actually have an unfortunate use of force, uh, there are a lot of people who want to sit back and they want to point fingers and say, this could have been done, that could have been done. But very rarely do we ever spend the time to actually highlight before there's an issue um, that you know, we're, we are operating in an environment that is more hostile and we're using a greater level of strength, restraint um, than ever before. And, uh, and I'm, I'm proud of our people for doing that. And of course, I encourage our folks to protect themselves and to protect the public. I don't ever want to see our people put themselves in a position uh, where they're going to be harmed because they're concerned about ridicule or scorn. Um, that's not, our people don't get paid to die. They don't get paid to get hurt. They get paid to make a difference. And we expect them to do that. Um, Mr. So Carroll. Chief, isn't it true though that the county uh, is now preparing a new technique for us to deal with these pursuits, to try and terminate them? Yes, we're actually gonna uh, touch on that. Uh, we, we are, I'll, I'll do it right now since you brought it up. We've instituted the pit maneuver, which is a pursuit intervention technique. Uh, it was actually developed in Fairfax uh, uh, years ago. Um, and we have found it to be an effective way of, of uh, ending pursuits. We feel we have a moral obligation to end a high-speed pursuit before it starts. Um, and when, when given that opportunity, we're going to execute that. Um, I can tell you that this past weekend, we had two police pursuits. Uh, we have not uh, completed our training regiment of the pit at this point, but we had two pursuits this, uh, this weekend, and both of them ended in arrests. Uh, most of the time when we have a pursuit, we find the person uh, and we take them into custody. So uh, I'm happy to report that. Um, if, you know, I don't buy into the belief that if somebody runs from us, they're running from us because we're chasing them. They're running from us because they're trying to avoid responsibility for what they've done. And, and I believe it's our responsibility uh, when conditions are fairly safe and reasonable for us to pursue that person. Um, I think a no pursuit policy actually encourages people to run. Uh, so uh, again, we do best what is routinely measured and, and audited. So I put some numbers there relating to our audits and inspections. You can see over the last couple of years, those have increased. Moving on to the, uh, the next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to point out for this, we've talked about our new deployment strategy, but our calls for service have increased by 19% over the last five years. Um, so, of course, it's consistent with the growth of the county, um, but, but it is uh, important to point out that we are handling more calls than before. Moving on to the next slide. Um, I want to take a moment to highlight, again, I never publicly announce whether or not we do or do not have a narcotics investigations uh, unit, but if we did, <laughs> we, uh, we may have uh, endeavored upon the largest uh, drug bust that we we know of in Chesterfield County history this past year. Um, one of our detectives who uh, may or may not, uh, well, I won't even name him because he works undercover, but uh, he worked on a year-long investigation. And in that investigation, um, it, in it involved over 100 law enforcement officers from state, local, and federal agencies to execute 20 search warrants. Um, and overall, we seized 37 kilos of cocaine, 87 kilos of marijuana, 67 grams of crack cocaine, 95 fentanyl pills, 17 firearms, five vehicles, and about $916,900 in cash. Um, the narcotics seized during this investigation uh, is believed to be the largest narcotics operation uh, in our department's history. And again, you know, we make these in, we make these impacts, and I'd point back to the output, which is that our we had two more drug overdoses in 2021 than we did in 2020. Uh, and nationwide, again, we had a, 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 a huge increase, about a 30% increase in overdoses. So uh, we are making an impact, a positive impact. And again, as I always say, money, guns, and drugs, they're always together. Money, guns, and drugs. Uh, again, wanted to point out uh, our efforts to uh, capturing those who would exploit our children. Uh, we went very public with child uh, sex offender warnings, um, and we're going to continue to do that. In fact, this year, our commitment is to double the number of our operations that we do. So next slide, please. 
And finally, everybody loves pets, so I figured uh, right before dinner I would just end with letting you know that we, uh, our animal shelter uh, experienced an 86% save rate last year, uh, and we were able to uh, adopt 621 pets, return 496 fur babies to their owners, uh, which as you know, if, if you're an animal lover, um, that's a priceless gift. So I'm very proud of, uh, really proud of everybody in our, in our agency. Um, there were a lot of people I did not get an opportunity to highlight, um, but I just want to share with you that, you know, the combined effort of everyone in our organization, as well as uh, our staff in our ECC, um, we couldn't do it without them. And, um, and I'm proud of the work that our folks have done, and I'm, I'm proud to share with you some of those outputs tonight. So thank you for taking the time. Do you have any questions? Board members. I just want to say thank you, uh, Chief, for doing an outstanding job and most appreciatively of the culture you have continued to work through your department. It's greatly appreciated. And you know, the one thing I hear about Chesterfield is that safety is high, very high on our citizens' uh, radar. And I greatly appreciate that. So thank you. And thanks for mentioning Fallen Creek area as well, which is part of my district. So thank you for that. Yes, sir. And your efforts in that area. Please continue to let us know what we can do as a board to support you and your efforts uh, and, and all the officers who work for us in Chester and our sheriff as well. What we can do to continue to be the best. And I, I love those numbers. And I know that culture, if the culture is great, I know that morale is, going, is even higher. So we, we applaud that and we applaud you. And thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Colonel, I have to say that um, myself and, and um, my colleague, Mr. Engel, had the opportunity, not sure if you're aware of this or not, to actually go down to the driving track and experience the training. Uh, we didn't do the training, but we got to ride in the car uh, in, in, uh, in reference to the, the new pit maneuver. And I, and, and I would tell you that um, I think that it's, it's, it's important for the community to understand and know that uh, there, there, this type of training for years had not been available to our officers. And this is a substantial change in policy um, for a way for us to combat these pursuits. And part of it, I think, uh, as you've illustrated, the, the pursuits have gone up over the years. And um, you know, in my career, I would tell you that uh, we know that there are many pursuits that end up in very, very bad, and in in where a citizen in several cases uh, were killed in Chesterfield County uh, by the pursuing vehicle. Um, this is a dangerous uh, maneuver uh, that we're, we're teaching. Uh, it's not uh, uh, as easy as everybody thinks it is, but it's very effective. And it, and it shows, again, the bravery uh, that our officers um, use every day a lot of work, and um, and so you know we were very fortunate to to be in a car with one of our most excellent uh, driving instructors. Where many times I thought we're going to wreck right now, and he's like, yeah, whatever, you know, it's no big deal. Uh, so uh, I commend all the officers that have gone through the training so far uh, and have passed. Uh, and I hope it comes to a situation where we never have to use it, but I have the utmost confidence that if we do, our people will be able to. Stop a pursuit to save lives uh, and to take someone in custody uh, who's probably done something bad to our community. So I commend you for the policy change, for the opportunity for the officers to receive this valuable training, uh, and, and, and understanding myself how valuable this is going to be for our community. So um, I wish everybody the best of luck. I don't know if I could pass it, but it, it, uh, it certainly is amazing. Thank you. Mr. Engel. Uh, just to add to that, I was impressed because it's not a training that when you're done, you passed. It's about a 50% pass rate, right. which <laughs> showed how serious everything was taken on um, teaching this maneuver so that we only have people that are implementing it that are of the uh, utmost trained and talented because it takes a lot to, um, we spend our whole life learning how to avoid hitting another car and to take an unnatural step to bump into another car on purpose is, um, it, it definitely takes a different mindset. So the officers that passed did a fantastic job, and some of them that didn't pass actually did a um, decent job, just not a good enough job. 
And that was what impressed me was that it wasn't quite good enough, even though it was okay. Um, so it just uh, gives me another reason to be proud of all of our men and women that served the county. So thank them all for all their work. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Ms. Haley. Well, and if I just might add to that, you know, I've been a huge advocate of the fact that, you know, if we don't give our folks the tools they need to, to do the job, then it's hard to hold responsibility. And I think that, you know, I commend you and your entire command staff for always looking at making sure that they have the tools and the training they need you know, so that they're not only going safely into the community and know how to protect themselves, but know how to best implement, you know, law enforcement within the community. Because when I see some of these stories from across the country, I always look first through that lens of, you know, what real training and tools did that officer have available to them? And we know, especially in some of these smaller jurisdictions, that it may have been a significant amount of time since that officer um, had any amount of training and had any real tools to implement. And so I, I think that's one of the really important things that, you know, we love hearing these stories about the new, you know, policies, new trainings that are, that we're, you know, engaging in to give our folks every tool and every opportunity they need to be sharp and be, you know, the best they can be when they're out there. So, you know, that comes from your leadership and the culture you've created and your command team. And so thank you. We can't thank you enough because that really does, you know, speak to all of the information you've given us today. Thank you. Chief, uh, you, you've built a culture of professionalism and diligence and uh, trust that's built on relationships. Continue, go forth, and uh, we will continue to support you. Dr. Casey. Thank you. I can just take a personal privilege while well, I was going to do it later on, but seeing all the very capable men and women behind us that, that may not hear in the first person, um, I'd just like to recognize uh, the police department that the Virginia State University, as you recall, uh, being the uh, first uh, it, for historical black colleges and universities of building bridges among regional law enforcement professional community leaders and uh, faculty and students, you know, started this program last year and they had their first appreciation and award ceremony. And it goes without saying, Chesterfield Police Department was well represented and, and recognized by the VSU community as a testimonial to everything you just heard and testimony to the representatives, if you will, that are behind me. So I just wanted to say that while you had your, your crew here, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you make us all proud, all of you. <laughs>